Is there something you could say as a small aside on how uh, smart contracts actually work if you look at the code? Is there some nice way to say um, technically, what is a smart contract? What does it mean to codify these agreements, the actual process for people who might not at all be familiar? I, I think you just write it into code that operates in this kind of decentralized infrastructure. You, you, you usually write code that runs in a central server somewhere. Now you write code that runs um, across a lot of different machines in this decentralized way. And then after you write it, you need services. And that's where oracles come in. They provide all the services. So just like you would be writing code in Web 2.0 land, running it on a server somewhere and using an API, here you'd be writing code putting it on a decentralized infrastructure like a blockchain or a smart contract platform like Ethereum. And then you would be using various services in the form of oracles. So they'll just be called oracles or decentralized services instead of APIs. And you're you're basically composing the same type of architecture, except it's hyper-reliable. Um, at the moment, it's a little bit less efficient because you know the, the, the there's an early stage to, to our industry. But it provides this extreme level of reliability and transparency which for certain use cases is an absolute critical component and uh, is completely reinventing how they work. So I, I think people should look at what are the use cases where that trust dynamic can be so heavily improved. And that's probably the ones where this is maybe initially useful. But I mean, just to emphasize, I don't think people realize when you say code that we're talking about non-obfuscated actual program. Like you can read it, you can understand it. Yeah. And it's there's something about uh, maybe this is my computer science perspective of like software engineering perspective, but there's something about the formalism of programming languages, which enforces simplicity and clarity and transparency. And because it's of, of seen to everybody, I mean, simplicity is enforced. There's no, there's something about natural language, like language as written in the constitution, for example, where there's so many interpretations with the, the nice thing about programs, there's no, there's not going to be a huge number of books written about what was meant by this particular line, because it's pretty clear. Like programming languages have a clarity to them that natural language does not, and they don't have ambiguity, which I think it's important to pause on because it's really powerful. It's really difficult to think about. I think we live in a world where all the philosophers and legal minds don't know how to program. So I, th I think th not all, most don't. And so we don't often see the philosophical impact of this kind of idea that the agreements between humans can be written in a programming language. That's a really transformative idea. Th that, I mean, I, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's an idea that's not just technical. It's not just financial, it's philosophical. It's rethinking human nature from a digital perspective. The, like, what is human civilization? It's interaction between humans. And rethinking that interaction as a digital interaction that is managed by programming languages, by programs, by code. I mean, that's, that's fascinating. That we'll look back at this time potentially as one where us little descendants of apes did not realize how how trans how important this moment in history is. Like human beings might be totally different a, a century from now because we codified the interaction between humans. That might have more of an impact than anything else we do today. You think about the impact of the internet, one of the cool things is the uh, digitization of data but we have not yet integrated the, the tools, the mechanisms fully that use that data and interact with humans yet. And that's what smart contracts do.